Good evening. Welcome to Brighton's Parish Church and the service of Lessons and Carols. If you are a visitor with us, an especially warm welcome to you. And we hope that one and all will find blessing as we share in this streamed service together. So let us worship God. And as we begin, we pause to light the Advent wreath, quieting our hearts and minds to meet with God and hear the songs and words of old. The reading this evening is taken from Micah 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small amongst the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word.
The reading this evening is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word.
The reading this evening is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. The Christmas Story how would you explain it? How would you picture Christmas if you could frame it? The nativity, right? Shepherds watching their flocks by night. Wise men trekking whilst tracking a sat nav starlight with Mary and Joseph, humbled by the sight of little baby Jesus tucked in tight. That's Christmas, right? Propped up with straw and reeds and a tray of animal feed and cushioned in. Hey, I know it sounds quite cozy and nice, Reality was, there was no room for the little guy on that Bethlehem night. He kept in a cradle. Animals as roommates. I'm not trying to pick holes in the state of the place. I'm just saying the way they were staying was just short of space. We talk about entrance. His birth from a dress meant Jesus literally arrived in the mess. But less about the birthplace and the state of the floor. I mean, there's more to the Christmas story than the deck of straw. Flip forward eight days. In the temple, this little guy's the reason for praise. From the lips of a guy called Sim who's in his old age. For years, Sim waited in anticipation, but then the old met the new. My eyes have seen your salvation. The newborn Jesus from messy manger to a passing of the bat and just eight days later, seeing the mess of the birth comes a new age. And what's more, the birth was foretold in a mess age. Which brings us back to the cast. At the nativity set, you see, it was a message that guided their stable footsteps. An angel postman popped round, said Mary'd found favour, a save the date declaration, you'll give birth to the saviour. He'd be son of the most high, born through the spirit, heir to David's throne, his reign without limit to Joseph. Call him Jesus, he really will bless, cause he came to save people from all their mess. To the shepherds, he's here to rescue. That's why he's come. The reason for good news of joy, he's the one. As for the wise men, they figured the news. They gave gifts and paid homage to little king of the Jews. See, God brought the message, so they entered the mess to see Jesus' arrival at the nativity set. But let's back up a sec. See, this rhetoric rings a bell. Back in the day, Isaiah waxed lyrical about a future, Emmanuel, God with us, one who'll be central to the story of forgiveness. So zoom out from the Christmas postcard, a message 700 years prior. He'll be a light to the searchers that spread salvation, says Isaiah. See, the angel's news, it wasn't new. In fact, these nativity messages echoed God's promises right through the ages. These messages read Jesus, speaking hope to the earth, predicting his arrival centuries before the birth. Thing is, when Christmas comes round, maybe there's a danger. Then we go Pinterest with Christmas and just pin up the manger in the nativity scene. It's like rating a whole film by watching one scene or thinking you know a novel because you had a quick look. So you get the whole story by skim reading one page in a book. And what I said before, I bought him born in the mess and the deco of straw. Maybe it could also be 
a metaphor for all the mistakes, all the messiness in life and what that creates, all the stuff in this world that just doesn't sit right. There was a reason he was born on that first Christmas night. He was born in the mess to make the wrong right. He's the message of hope. Because <laughs> out of the mess, saw God name's birth that will certainly bless. Frame the stable, sure, but don't miss the picture. It was a message declared since the beginning of scripture. A war in the mess, but there's only one victor. A heel bruised, but be good news for sure. The very promise became flesh in that dead goat of straw. See, from the mess comes a message, and there's none that is higher. Because what follows the mess is I-A-H, mess. The reading this evening is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word.
Let us take a moment to pray before we think about God's Word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be true and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Here's a question for you to engage with in the live chat or just think about at home. What has been the highlight of your year? I'll give you 30 seconds to think or talk about that or put it in the live chat just now. If we were meeting in the sanctuary just now, I am sure there'd be a real hubbub of sound and chatter going on and I'd have to jump in and and bring you all to a sudden halt. And that would have shown that there were still many highlights this past year. But if over a cuppa, I was to ask you what your lowest point was, I wonder what you'd say. I wonder where the twists and turns of life have left you how maybe the pandemic has affected you. And I wonder what your perception of God may be now based upon your year. In our last reading, we heard of the birth of Jesus in the manger and of the angels visiting the shepherds. The encounter the shepherds had with the angels must have been a real high point for them, something they would talk about for years to come, something that positively impacted their understanding of God. And maybe you can relate to those shepherds. Maybe you've had a year of much joy and and God has been very real and tangible to you. And if that's you, then maybe the example of the shepherds is something you should copy. We read that they spread the word concerning what had been told them. The shepherds returned home glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. Maybe their response to God and what he had done in their lives should be your response as well, to share with others what you've seen of God this year and to be thankful to God for it, giving him your worship even after the year we've faced. But in the experience of Mary and Joseph, we see another side to life, a side a lot of us can probably relate to. For in their experience, the apparent silence and absence of God was very real. It had been nine months since they had heard from the angel. Nine months of silence. And when the time comes for the baby to be born, there's no maternity, you know, all set up and ready to go. In fact, there's not even room in the inn. And Mary is forced to give birth in a stable. I wonder if they ask themselves, is this really what you want for us, God? Is this really your plan? You seem a little bit absent just now. There are times in life when God seems silent and absent, and it can raise all sorts of questions. Where are you, God? Do you care? Are you even there? I wonder if that's your kind of year. I wonder if you are approaching Christmas with a sense of loneliness, maybe through the the absence of loved ones, even if it's simply brought about through the isolation we've been forced to endure this past year. But it may also be due to sadder circumstances. I wonder if during this season of Advent, you are asking the questions, where are you, God? Do you care? Are you even there? 
Those questions have been asked across the generations. Indeed, across all human time, and I've been there myself. So, is there any good news? Well, according to the angels, there is, for they said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. At the heart of the Christmas story, at the heart of Christmas, is the good news that God has not forgotten but has come close. He hasn't given up on us or abandoned us. Rather, He has come down into the broken, messy, lonely places of this world because He loves us. At the heart of the Christmas story is the claim that God was to be found in the feeding trough, experiencing all the difficulties of life that you and I experience because He humbled Himself. He identified with us and became one of us. You and I, we might hope for the fanfare of the angels, for the highs and certainties of faith, but the Christmas story reminds us that God often shows up in the places we don't expect Him, as a baby in a feeding trough, who would grow up to be a carpenter, working the family business, and then one day become a Jewish rabbi who suffered and then was crucified. Friends, I wonder whether there have been times in this past year when God has shown up and we've not noticed because He showed up in a way we did not expect. Maybe in the moments of apparent silence and absence, God was closer than you could ever imagine, ready to draw alongside you if you would only turn to Him. For Mary and Joseph, their experience of God's silence and absence came to an end when they welcomed the baby Jesus into their lives. At that moment, God became very tangible. The silence was shattered by the cry of a babe, and the absence of God was cast aside with the promises of God being real in flesh and blood. Friends, the silence and absence of God in our own lives can end in a similar way, by welcoming Jesus to be part of our lives as well. The invitation of the Christmas story is to not only celebrate with the shepherds or empathize with the questions of Mary and Joseph, but to welcome Jesus into our own lives at this time maybe for the first time, or once again. The God who seems silent and absent is the God who came as a babe at Christmas. He is the God who died on the cross but rose again, and He is the God who is closer than you can ever imagine, showing up in the unexpected places and ready to be part of your life if you are ready to welcome him in. May this Christmas be the Christmas where you welcome Jesus afresh into your life. I pray it may be so. Amen.
The reading this evening is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word.
Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have heard once more the wonderful message of your coming to us in Jesus. It was described as tidings of great joy, good news for all people. And we thank you for that message. Told through the well-loved words we have heard and sung again tonight, so familiar, so often repeated, and yet still so special and meaningful. Loving Father, we have relived that first Christmas long ago, reminding ourselves of the wonder of the birth of Jesus, and we rejoice in your great love which sent him. We thank you for the faith and trust of Mary and Joseph, that they were willing to play their part in your purposes. We thank you for the pilgrimage and gifts of the wise men who showed such determination to seek and respond. We thank you for the simple actions of the shepherds, who having heard the message and seen its truth for themselves, shared with others what they had experienced. Teach us, we pray, Heavenly Father, as we celebrate this Christmas time, to learn from all their examples that we might follow in their footsteps. Take our faith, small though it is. Take our gifts, few though they are. Take our love, poor though it seems, and weave them into your plans and purposes, that as you have come to us, so may we welcome you with openness, vulnerability, and trust. Gracious God, as we prepare for Christmas Day, it is a year like no other, with limitations and changes that none of us wish to bear or face. Yet as we go about wrapping presents and preparing shopping lists, we remember the many who go without and still others who will struggle to find joy in Christmas because of the loss of loved ones or the difficulties in life. We ask that you would be close to each individual, that they may know the presence and blessing of the one who is Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, where we can be the means by which your love and blessing touches the life of another, help us to be open-handed and generous, whether it be in the giving of money or of food or simply of our time and attention, even if it be at a distance, by phone or letter. Loving God, we pray that the message, the Advent message of hope, might burst afresh upon our world and upon our communities in the Braes area and beyond this Christmas, bringing to many a release of love, life, and light. For we ask all this in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. The reading this evening is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. 
He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his Holy Word. Thank you for joining with us for the streamed service of Lessons and Carols. We pray it has been a blessing to you and we do have other Christmas services in the coming days. Please join us if you are able and details are available from our website, Facebook page and other means. We do pray for a safe 
and hopeful Christmas for one and all that you may also share in the joy and hope of Christmas, knowing the Lord close and knowing the love of family and friends one way or another. So as you go from this time of worship, go to welcome Jesus into your life, to see that he is closer than you might expect, offering us the gift of his love and grace this Christmas. And go now with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.